Hello and welcome back to Heider Builds Your Ride. Uh, we've got another 79 series here that we kitted out. Heaps of cool stuff on this one. Uh, like usually, I'll show you around, but first, let's roll the intro. Let's get straight away to the business side of this build. It did come in with the Canopy internals pre-made. Uh, this job was done two and a half years ago. The customer couldn't get to his car for a very long period of time. Wasn't happy with the electric system that was in here to begin with. He wanted to upgrade it straight away. So we took the old stuff out, recycled whatever we could, and then we came up with this. So what we've got is we've got our Egan DC hub here to connect everything together. Then we've got a Red Arc Manager 30 working in parallel with the Red Arc BCDC 1225D, which when the engine runs will give you a combined charging power of 60 amps. Then we've made this custom bracket here that we've used for the Prado builds before. We integrated the Red Vision display into it. Now this hasn't got a switching system connected to it. This is just to monitor the system and give you Bluetooth connectivity so when you're driving, you're sitting in the driver's seat, you can monitor everything with the app on your mobile phone. So you got USB charge ports here. You've got an accessory socket, more USB charge ports. You can turn a 2000 watt Red Arc inverter on and off through this remote panel. The inverter is behind the panels there and then powers this power board here. So all you need to do to actually turn 240 on and off is press the button, 240 turns on and you can plug in your 240 volt appliances right there and then just push off a button and you turn it back off and the best thing is you don't even have to see the inverter so it makes for a very clean install and uh, what else we've got is you can plug in an extension cord here so that you can use the 240 volt charger in the manager so just in case you want to store the vehicle for a longer period of time you can just use the standard extension cord plug it in, close the door, and it just maintains the battery. We've also got a solar input on this side here, so you can plug in a solar blanket when you're stationary, but that's not all the solar this thing has got. Uh, I'll show you the other solar panel in a minute, but have a look here. We needed to put 200 amp hours of lithium battery storage in here, and the problem was that the battery compartment that was built back in the days been made for a 100 amp hour AGM battery. So we had no chance of getting a good 200 amp hour in there. So what we did is we used the Amtron Blade Super Slimline batteries and we put them behind the system. So this was a complete waste of space that wasn't used before. Because when you have a look, the drawers just slide out like that. So the place behind it wasn't used and the batteries fit in perfectly. There's about a 10 mil gap here and it just fills up the space very nicely. It will now later on go back to uh, custom Overland solutions. Chris did build the internals back in the days when he was still called custom installations. He's now joined, joined forces with ProCamp solutions and they call themselves custom Overland solutions now and they are in the workshop where custom installations was before. 
So a bit of a backstory there. They make a little cover plate that just slides in here so you won't even see the batteries anymore uh, when it's all done. And then as you can see here, we've got really good storage area, big drawer here, and even more storage space here. This is also for a 32 liter angle fridge freezer that the customer takes from time to time. I took that out so you can see all the installation a bit better. This also comes out further. You got even more storage space in here. Push that all back in. The cable folds in and out quite neatly. We usually do this by mounting the cable at the midway point. So it's tight when it's in, it's tight when it's out and it gains some slack in between, but it can't get caught. Makes it last for a very, very long time. Uh, now let me show you the solar panel because this is really cool. On track fabrication have built the setup and they've also built uh, the boat ramp and everything on top and the customer wanted 200 watts of solar. So what we've done here or what on track fabrication did, they've put drawers in so you can slide this panel in and out. And the trick of this is you have got your solar panel connection there. You can plug it in when the solar panel is out and when you want to store it you just plug it into a dummy anderson plug here so the cable doesn't hang around and then i can take this whole solar panel and just store it away there will be no charge going to the solar through the solar panel anyway because you got some shading from the boat rack so even if the boat is on the roof the shade that you get from the boat rack will not allow the solar panel to run. We've uh, decided to disconnect it in that way. The reason for that is the customer said he wants to be able to remove the boat rack and replace it with a rooftop tent from time to time. So just to make it a bit harder for us. So we've managed to put the solar connector there. We've managed to put work lights there. They are switchable from the cap. There's also power supply to the boat rack for a boat winch which i will show you later and the way this is all done is through connectors in the front i'll show you here this is for the boat winch to go on and off you can just disconnect it there's color coded plugs so you can't mix it up there's also a deutsch plug on the roof which is a bit hard to see at the moment uh, so you can just disconnect uh, the whole boat rack then you can put a rooftop tent on have the same Deutsch connector and then you can connect solar panels on the top of the rooftop tent you got power to the tent and you can still put work lights on the back of the tent if you want to so you can just swap the roof installation on the canopy unplug it plug the other one in which I think makes it extremely versatile and then also in the back here we've got a rear view mirror camera so this camera is connected uh, to a screen that is replacing uh, the rear view mirror as soon as you turn accessories on the camera turns on and when you use your rear view mirror instead of just looking through the mirror you actually look out of this camera and you can still see everything that's going on on the back of the vehicle uh, also this was equipped with some lights here that we hooked up to a separate switch as well so just in case he doesn't have anything on the roof. He's still got some lights if he needs to reverse in the dark. Uh, let's keep going on this side here. So we put a compressor in here, usual ARB twin piston compressor. This still needs to be finished off. On track fabrication still needs to do some work. That's why this is not bolted in yet. But in the future, you will be able to plug in your hose here and then switch the compressor on here as well at the moment it's not connected that's why we put a do not run sticky tape over it uh, this is for air over here we've got water on track fabrication will still install the pump and do the plumbing and when you turn it on you've also got a water gauge connected so as soon as you power the pump the water gauge gets powered as well and you can see how much water you got left in your tank and then you've got the water pump in here and you'll have a hose connector so you've got pressurized water to work with. Uh, furthermore, what we've got is uh, we've got an upright fridge here. 
Dometic one, this one was installed already, as you can see, almost three years old, never been used so far. Then we've got National Lunar Lights also on the other side. Our orange and white lights, so if you hold this, it switches the color to white and you've got three different dimming stages on it. We've also got internal lights here and also on the other side, so you can turn on white light and you can turn on orange light as well inside the canopy. This was already part of the old canopy installation, quite neatly done by Chris back in the days. Very nice. There's also some uh, extra cup holders and charge ports in here from Department of Interior. So you got USB charge ports, accessory port, cup holder, same on the other side. Uh, we've got a roof console from Department of Interior and we've also got a center console from Department of the Interior. Uh, we did put our charge ports on the side here. There's more charge ports in the center console itself. This is uh, the rear view mirror camera that I've talked about before. So that turns on when the car turns on and you can actually this whole mirror is a screen 9.6 inch wide and it's like you're actually looking through your mirror but with the camera. Cool thing about this is as well you can pop in an SD card. It's got a camera in the front as well and as soon as it turns on it starts recording from the rear camera and the front camera so you got a dash cam at the same time which I think is a very versatile piece of kit. We install them by actually mounting a RAM mount kit here so you got all degrees of freedom to adjust the screen whichever way you prefer. We've also got some gauges here on the A pillar. If I'm not mistaken, these have been installed by a PDP back in the days when this vehicle was first built. Same for the screen here. And there's also a unit chip being installed where you can change the tuning maps on the side here. Uh, we've also put some switches in here for the HTX spotlights. Uh, we've also installed this custom panel and put a RJ45 connector through here because there was a standard uh, UHF radio installed before and now we've got the XRS370 so all we need is a pass through and then the radio can sit here or here. We usually don't install these because we got a feeling the customer knows a lot better than us where exactly he wants his handpiece so we leave that for him to connect and then when he doesn't want to use it all he needs to do is just store it up in there, get extra storage room there, more storage room for the passenger on that side. And I think this is it for the cab. Uh, let me show you a bit more in the engine bay. This is where all the power comes from that goes to the vehicle directly. So what we've got here is a Century Overlander maintenance free start battery and maintenance free Century Overlander backup battery. This is for our get home safe option. This battery is connected to nothing except to the main battery. So nothing can take power from this. It's being connected with the SBI 12. That's a Red Arc Smart solenoid. So as soon as the engine runs, this gets connected when the voltage rises. And then as soon as the voltage drops again, this battery gets disconnected. So just in case, the driver leaves the lights on, leaves the ignition on, whatever he might do, and he drains the start battery and he cannot start anymore. He just needs to push a button in his dash. I can show you the button a bit later. And this battery gets connected to the start battery and you can actually start the engine again because this is just a backup and you can't drain it. Also works really well in case your alternator fails. What happens then is that you can press the button. We use a latching switch for that connect both batteries together and you get twice the amount of driving time with the charge left in the batteries uh, before your batteries are empty and the vehicle stops. Good thing about that is you don't have to do anything else. The DC-DC chargers in the back will automatically stop charging because they are voltage triggered so as soon as the voltage drops they will turn off and nothing else gets connected so you just turn all the electric appliances off that you got in the car as much as you can 
and you can easily get six to eight hours driving time out of these two batteries with turning everything off and just having the engine running. That should usually get you back to safety or at least to a spot where you can call for help. Over here we've got the switch for the get home safe feature. So if you press this button, it links both batteries together and you can either drive off both batteries or you can jump start yourself. Then we've got the work light switch here. This turns on the lights on the boat loader, on the boat loader rack. So you got some nice high up work lights that you can turn on and off. This is also handy when you are reversing or when you're in the bush, you don't have to get out of the car. You just press the button, turn the lights on. And this here, the rear lights, they are the ones that are mounted inside the tray, the low down ones. You can turn them on and off from here. Obviously, all of this runs off the lithium batteries, except for the battery link. Uh, other things that we've got in here, we put our MIDI fuse holders on top of the battery here. What we've got is power supply to the Lightforce HTX lights. These are still the older version HTX ones. Uh, for those lights, we always make a custom harness because we found that you need two relays and two power supplies because the light force harness we've installed twice and the fuse holders and the relay holders keep melting on them so we started making our own harnesses for it and we've got one relay for uh, the hid side one relay for the led side and then we got a midi fuse each for the relays that will last forever and then we've also got a power supply to the dc hub to the back uh, that's the power supply for the bc dc and for the manager so it starts charging and that is almost it except for this here so what we've done here is this is our custom bracket for winch isolator this vehicle has already got an isolator in the front and it's got all the cables running to the back for a winch in the back as well. Uh, the winch cradle still needs to be installed. On-track fabrication is going to do that as soon as the vehicle goes back. And then if you go bush, all you need to do is just turn the isolator on, give power to the winches. We only use one winch isolator, not two. Uh, you will never overload that because Generally, you will not use the front and rear winch at the same time unless you want to pull your car in half. And I think then that is the least of your problems. Uh, this is the aerial here for the XR S370. This customer opted for the 6.6 dB aerial. And like I said, HTX lights here. And that is it in the front. Uh, we're going to put that fridge back in to show you what that looks like. And I think that we're pretty much done with this one. Fridge is back in, uh, sorry, freezer. So the customer will use this side here only occasionally on really long trips. If he wants to freeze some food, it inhibits the access to the electrics a little bit, but you can still see the display. Unfortunately, it was the only way with the given setup we could realize that. Uh, but you can still get to all your access point uh, to your charge points there 240 is on that side uh, that's it fast on this one we're going to send it back to on track fabrication for the last finishing touches and i think the only thing that's left to do now is to put our patch of approval on it this one's now ready to drive anywhere thank you and see you for the next one